Kassar as Sunstein, can it happen here, authoritarianism in America? Dive into the compelling analysis of the potential emergence of authoritarianism in America, as explored in Kassar. Sunstein's book, Can It Happen Here? The book examines historical concerns surrounding dictatorship in the United States and delves into the playbook Donald Trump might follow to consolidate power. It highlights crucial areas like attacking the press, Congress, bureaucracy, courts, states and local governments, and the party system. It also discusses the role of divisions between identitarians and nativists, echo chambers, and intolerance in the current political climate. Trump's Authoritarian Playbook The fear of a dictator inhabiting the Oval Office is a concept as ancient as the American Republic itself. Trump's challenge to the democratic system has stirred many fears amongst the American population, but how might he take control and consolidate his power? Through his strategies of attacking the press, Congress, bureaucracy, courts, state and local governments, party systems, and stirring up the public, Trump may be able to gain a steady grip on the American government. While he has yet to achieve full control of each category, his potential power as President of the United States makes the possibility of it all the more terrifying. The playbook Trump is utilizing to establish authoritarianism is complex and multifaceted, but it is one that must not be taken lightly. The U.S. government is no easy target for a fascist takeover. While a small state is easy to conquer, a large and complex government like the U.S. is a poor target for fascism. In Hitler and Mussolini's times, governments were comparably smaller and easier to control. Moreover, only a small percentage of Washington, D.C.'s population voted for Trump, indicating deep suspicion among civil servants towards dictatorship. Key Trump supporters like Michael Flynn and Steve Bannon lasted briefly in the administration before being replaced. The Truth About the Deep State The deep state is real, and it exists not just in shadowy apparatus in some countries but in the security and intelligence bureaus of the United States. These agencies are entrusted with extraordinary privileges to gather information and can undermine democracy, but they can also serve as bulwark against elected leaders' illegal or tyrannical behavior. The deep state has been associated with sinister acts in the past, such as the FBI's campaign against Martin Luther King Jr. during J. Edgar Hoover's administration. However, these misdeeds mostly ended and the federal government imposed new restrictions on these agencies in the mid-1970s. There have been concerns during the Trump presidency that partisanship has tainted the deep state's neutrality. While some may argue that the leaks of Michael Flynn were justified, it is crucial to prevent a return of the deep state's pre-1975 norms. Divisive Politics and the Rise of Authoritarianism The increasing intolerance and polarization in modern U.S. politics have led to the rise of authoritarian leaders like Russia's Vladimir Putin and Turkey's Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who exploit divisions within their nations to fuel their power and inflame hostility towards the opposition. Donald Trump tried to follow a similar strategy, but he faced pushback from the American system of checks and balances. Nonetheless, his election shows that the willingness of the electorate to prefer authoritarian candidates over democratic ones still persists. The article argues that the modern political landscape of the U.S. is divided into two factions, the identitarians, left-wing, who focus on identity politics, and the nativists, right-wing, who are wary of globalization and technological, cultural, and immigration changes. The intolerance between these two sides fuels their extremism and echoes and misinformation on social media strengthen their resolve. The lack of compromise in this atmosphere of intolerance only widens the divide, fosters echo chambers and leads to the rise of authoritarianism. Trump's Leadership and Common Sense The Power of Common Sense in Political Leadership, Obama vs. Trump Common sense is often used to justify decisions made based on expert opinions and advice in politics. However, Trump has taken this rhetoric quite literally, to the extent of alienating even his administration's paid experts. If he governs by common sense, which is supposedly obvious to any reasonable person, anyone who disagrees with him is unreasonable. 
The value of moderation and compromise is, however, being rediscovered in American politics, which provides a glimmer of hope for a future administration. Contrasting Trump's approach with his predecessor Obama's nuanced thought process, we see stark differences in how they perceive decision-making. Obama acknowledged that the solutions proposed might not work and that decision-making meant dealing with probabilities. Unfortunately, the common appeal of common sense lies in its lack of shades of gray. Inherent in human storytelling, common sense relies on conflict and drama, all wrapped up with a winner and a loser. Trump's overly simplistic logic of Obamacare struggling after he undermined it or the Paris Climate Accord fraying after he badmouthed it evidencing the idea's fatal flaws cannot be compared to Obama's far more nuanced thought processes. The Fragility of Civil Liberties The United States, once regarded as a bastion of democracy and freedom, has a disturbing history of ignoring civil liberties. From the mass incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II to the outlawing of the Communist Party in 1954, the U.S. government has trampled on civil rights in the past. Today, Trump's presidency poses a serious threat to the rule of law and the promotion of democratic values. Although there is no evidence that the U.S. is shifting towards dictatorship, American democracy is undoubtedly in crisis. Civil discourse and reasoned disagreement are becoming rare, and extremism is on the rise. The author contends that Trump's election is a symptom of deeper intolerance within American society, and only a rise of moderate voices can counteract this worrying trend. In conclusion, while there is no significant evidence to suggest a radical authoritarian shift in the United States, the book outlines that the current state of democracy in America is undergoing a crisis. Trump's election was a symptom of the divisions between identitarian and nativist groups and the growing intolerance in the nation, though the American system's size and complexity make it hard for any authoritarian regime to overtake, the continuous polarization of citizens and the extreme partisanship that has taken root poses inherent risks. It alerts the readers to the importance of staying vigilant and addressing the underlying issues within society, and politics that can give rise to authoritarianism, 